Hey there, welcome to today's lesson on section 7.1 and 7.2. Um, I decided to combine these two sections since they both deal with uh, graphing exponential functions, but of course one is dealing with growth, which meaning that when x increases, y will also increase, and one, will, one deals with decay, meaning that when x increases, y is going to decrease. Um, let's start with number one. So the general formula for most exponential functions is this, where a represents the initial value and b represents the growth factor. Um, And if b equals 1, sorry, if b is greater than 1, well, the growth function. And let me rephrase that. b actually represents growth slash decay factor. It all depends on the value of b. If b is greater than 1, we are going to have a growth function. If I plug in some values, like, say I plug in 0, I know y is going to be 1. If I put 1, I get 2. Plug in 2, I get 4. And uh, for grins and giggles, let's plug in some negative values. 1 half and 1 fourth. So you have something kind of like this. So here's how the graph looks. So you can see why it's called growth, because as x gets larger, y is also increasing. And actually, y is going to increase very quickly as x keeps increasing, hence the name exponential. Um, if you look at a domain and range for this, um, the domain is all real numbers. There's no reason why we can't plug anything we want to an exponent. But the range is going to be interesting. Is just y greater than 0. And here's the reason why. 2 to the x can never be negative, since the base is positive. So if you raise 2 to any power, uh, it will always be a positive value. Um, but it can never exactly equal 0, because there's no value of x that can make 2 to the x 0. Uh, and when this happens, this is kind of a new thing. This is called an asymptote. Um, you can think of it as kind of like a barrier. It's kind of like a barrier for the graph. And the equation of this asymptote will be y equals 0. So we would not expect the graph to go below y equals 0. Um, we'll talk more about this in great detail when I see you guys are in block number 1 this week. Uh, but when I create these graphs, I will also be drawing a dashed line as kind of a barrier for the graph. Uh, the initial value here. So if we kind of dissect this a little bit more. So we knew b equal 2 and a equal 1 because um, the, we don't see any number being multiplied to 2 to the x. So you assume that a 1 is being multiplied to it. Um, and that did make sense because the initial value, when x is 0, y is 1. Let's look at another graph. Now in this case, b equals 1 half or b is less than 1. When that happens, we have what we call a decay function. And you can look at example on page 486. Take a close look at this one. So if I plug in 0, so I get 1. Plug in 1, I get half. Plug in 2, I get 1 fourth. But if I plug in negative 1 or negative 2, I would get 2 or 4. 
So it's kind of the opposite of the other type of function we looked at. Um, so neg it's negative 2, you get 4. Negative 1, you get 2. 0, 1. Uh, 1 half. So you see how it's dropping. Okay, that wasn't that great of a curve, but that's okay. Domain still the same, all real. And the range is also still the same as well. Y is still greater than 0. And we still have an asymptote. It's like a barrier. at y equals 0, because you can never make half to the x that can never be negative. Um, a here is still the same, so initial value is still 1. Um, and I think that's all I really wanted to say about that graph. Let's look at something a little more complicated like number 3. So this kind of brings me to the more general way of writing this using H and K. So if we think about it, um, H here is going to be 1 and K is going to be negative 3. Um, so, but we want to be kind of careful here. Uh, because if I were to plug in 1 for x, if I actually calculate the y value, I actually get 1. And I'll explain why that's the case. But 1 comma 1 would actually be one of my points in my graph. See, That's y equals 2 to the x, right? Now, if I shift it 1 to the right, the graph will look like this, right? And then if I vertically stretch it, it means I have to multiply the y values by 4. So if I vertically stretch it, now I'm going to be at 1 comma 2, sorry, 1 comma 4, and 1 comma 8, sorry, 2 comma 8. And then I shift it down 3. graph will look more like this. So that's why we really want to be careful here um, with the whole h and k thing uh, for exponential functions is because h and k is not going to actually be a point on the graph. Uh, but it does tell you how it compares to the parent function. Um, but if you do plug in 1, y does equal 1. If I plug in 2, I should get um, 5. If I plug in 0, I should get negative 1. I think that's right. Yeah, because 2 is negative 1 power is 1 half, so you work it out. 4 times half is 2, 2 minus 2 is negative 1. So the graph will look something kind of like this. So really when you do these, do make a table. It's a little bit tricky to um, do the h and k thing with exponential functions. Um, but what you do want to look out for is the asymptote.
in this case it's going to be y equals negative 3. Making our domain still all real numbers, but our range now will be y is greater than negative 3. And the reason why is because of this right there. Because this by itself can never be negative, but then when you minus 3 it shifts it down by 3. Because uh, originally the asymptote was at y equals 0, now it goes down by 3 units. So you have, I'll give you a chance to try to do one of these on your own tonight, and then we can talk about it in class tomorrow. Finally, for number four, um, h here is negative one, and k is negative two, but this is going to now be decay, because b is less than one here. Um, if I plug in negative one, y would equal one in this case. If I plug in zero, uh, I think you get negative half. If I plugged in negative two and worked it out, I think I'll get four. So graph does something kind of like this. In this case, we have an asymptote. at y equals negative 2. And domain is still all real. The range will be y is greater than negative 2. And that's because of this negative 2 right here. See, this by itself can never be negative, but then you have the minus 2, so it causes the graph to go down by 2 units. So the asymptote shifts down by 2 units. So you can use k actually for shifting of the asymptote, but for the point it's a little bit weird. Um, just because the way the function is designed. So that's basically uh, 7, 1 and 7, 2. I'll uh, just have you guys do a few problems. I'll po post them on our agenda, and then we could discuss this in great detail in class tomorrow. But at least it kind of get, get you thinking about this for tonight. All right. I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.